top 28 was last week. Now, I had not heard of these COP28, COP27 conferences. I always assumed COP28 was the male stripper at Anna Kasparian's bachelorette party. (laughs) Uh, But apparently COP28 is a global conference of uh, very environmentally conscious oligarchs, uh, one of them being Mm -hmm. Al Gore. And so here's Al Gore speaking at COP28 about the problems of the Internet and social media. Ironic, since Al Gore obviously invented the internet i very famously took credit uh for inventing the internet in the 1990s but uh apparently frankenstein's monster is turning on the creator so here's al gore talking about the threat to democracy that is the internet and social media algorithms of governing people a free self-governing people rely on a shared base of knowledge that serves as a basis for reasoning together collectively. But uh, if you have social media that is dominated by algorithms that uh, pull people down these uh, rabbit holes that are a bit like pitcher plants, these algorithms, uh, they are the digital equivalent of AR-15s. They ought to be banned. They really ought to be banned. It's an abuse of the public forum. But when these when people are pulled down these uh, rabbit holes, you know what's at the bottom of the rabbit hole? That's where the echo chamber is. Uh, And if you spend too much time in the echo chamber, what's weaponized is another form of AI, not artificial intelligence, artificial insanity. (laughs) I'm serious. I'm serious. You're Al Gore speaking at, I guess, the 28th global environmental conference and you're cautioning people against echo chambers yeah right like, like what as the if fuck this, you get the pulse as if this room is not a giant echo chamber but well, more importantly uh, yeah. i want to play that- the first part of this one more time just just so we can get something because there's a, a, a bit of translation i would just like to do for the audience a free self-governing people rely on a shared base of knowledge that serves as a basis for reasoning together collectively. Okay, so what he means by that is an easily controlled population of brainwashed automatons must get their information from a handful of government approved, you know, corporate media sources. That that's what that means. And well, then that- he puts a button on it with the rest of this. But uh, if you have social media that is dominated by algorithms that uh, pull people down these uh, rabbit holes that are a bit like pitcher plants, these algorithms, uh, they are the digital equivalent of AR-15s. They are- okay, so what that means is that if people start sharing information and ideas on their own and create their own independent media channels like this or even if you're smaller even if you're just a user on a social media platform when ordinary people start sharing their own ideas amongst themselves uh the narratives from those aforementioned government approved corporate media outlets get diluted to the point where no one buys into them anymore and that's a threat to democracy even though that last thing i described is actual democracy this is actually a contempt for democracy that he's expressing here yeah, of course. No, their idea of democracy that when, when I when I was in uh, when I was in Venice in September and they described their government that that really uh, a bell went off. So I, ne- I never really delved into that. The history of the Venetian Republic. Yeah, they had democracy among an oligarchy. They had right. elections among the leading citizens. But that's it. Um, and that was their idea of democracy. That's the idea of democracy that our ruling classes have, whether they're on the right, whether they're on the left, whether it's Al Gore, whether it's Jeb Bush, they believe that they should be able to dictate the terms of the conversation via their supplicants in the media, and the public should only debate and and discuss within those parameters. And these platforms whatever their limitations and whatever their failings have really blown a hole in that model. It was very easy for them to make people choose soap flakes, a and soap flakes B 
when they had control over all of the messaging. And the only other people around were, you know, people handing out zines on a corner. That that could not compete with the media machine that they had to promulgate the message of. It's what Chomsky talked about. They they tell you that the New York Times is left, so that anything to the left of the Times is out of bounds. Not right. not out of bounds. Not even something that worthy of discussion. That's just woo crazy, right? Now you've got people who are not on the approved list of narrative managers with many more people listening to them than the managers. People like Joe Rogan, people like Jimmy Dore, people like Glenn Greenwald, people like Matt Taibbi. These are all people that in former times they would have unpersoned. They wouldn't have had a platform. You never would have heard from these people. They would have disappeared them down a rabbit hole. That is really the battle of this moment. It is it is people like Al Gore and his ilk trying to get back the control over messaging and narrative that they used to have by shutting down these platforms. They want to end democracy under the premise of saving it. Yeah, exactly. Even if that means interfering in capitalism, right? I mean, Al Gore says later on in this speech how we have to adjust capitalism. And then you might think, wow, because Al Gore certainly a neoliberal's neoliberal, right? Far from a socialist, Al Gore. But what he means by that is that we have to tweak the incentives because as Russell just mentioned, Joe Rogan, Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, Matt Taibbi, these guys are all extremely popular, right? If they were just unleashed and allowed to say what they want, where they wanted, they'd be 10 times bigger than they are now, right? right. But right. they're not allowed. And so right. if you are following a purely market-based incentive, there's every market-based incentive to promote those voices, right? right. I mean, a guy like right. Rogan, I mean, you know, the, his reach is unbelievable. Um, Greenwald, too, when he was on Substack, he was, I think, number one or number two. Now Taibbi is number one or number two, but those two guys were at the, at the, at the top right. of the game. Right. Right. Um, and so when a guy like Al Gore talks about, well, we need to tweak capitalism, he's not talking about socialism. He's not talking about giving you health care. He's talking about we need to distort the incentives away from uh, pure market based incentives. Right. Because a market based incentive would lead you to promote a lot of these voices that they obviously want stifled at best, shut down at worst. That's right. where the ESG comes in. That's where this whole new World Economic Forum model comes in. That's where the social credit score comes in, right? We have so much now. They have amassed such wealth that they can simply dole out money according to who they feel deserves it. That's to a right. large extent what the Russia-Ukraine right. war is about. That's to a large extent what the why Russia has been isolated through most of its history. Obviously, they didn't have this kind of thing through most of its history. But Russia is not with the program, right? Uh, they remained orthodox when most of Europe went Catholic, right? They're not hip. They're not hip to right. the new shit, right? <laughs> you got to be hip to the new shit if you want to be in the club. And once these oligarchs have amassed such fortune, they get to control who else gets to join them in the rich people club. They can just give it to you if they like you. And they can right. deny it to right. you if they don't like you. There's right. not really a market incentive there. It's, it's not about selling the most sub stacks or the most, you know, right. uh, videos. It's about getting in the good graces of people who have the power to make you rich if they like you enough. And Greenwald, guys like Jimmy, guys like Rogan, they're great at what they do, but they're not in that club. They're not in well, that club. Well, that, well, that's why as successful as, uh, as they are, um, whenever people say, oh, that's a grift, that's a grift. We've always said this. You want a grift in this space. You want to make those people happy. That's the grift. Right. Because there are enough lonely, elderly people who will give you an audience. And then you can get in on their money. You can get in on their PAC money. You can get in on their grants. You can get donations from them. You can a lot get... of these guys have done that. Exactly what you're saying. Sorry to cut you off. Brooklyn Dad Defiant, Politics Girls. Uh, they're they're right. paid people. Not right. much different than us. Right. We could do that. I could stand in right. my kitchen and cut zucchini and talk about how it's important <laughs> to vote for Joe Biden and how Pete sure. Buttigieg is the smartest, most qualified oh, we, transportation we, secretary we've ever had. I could do that very easily. I have a nice we, kitchen. We, Russell we could was do here. That tomorrow, it's a good right? kitchen for that, actually.
In fact, we have an announcement to make about some changes <laughs> yeah, we're making right. to the yeah, show. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the grift. Doing what we do, you're always vulnerable. You're always vulnerable because those people, uh, you know, they have powerful connections and they have a lot of social capital. And uh, they press a button, you're gone. It's a, a Greenwald said it uh, when I when I asked him uh, when we were interviewing him about Danziger, and he talked about Assange. He said, "Yeah, like if you're a really effective dissident, they will destroy you. They will destroy you. So if you're doing a shit, if you're setting out on this path of doing political commentary, if you want a grift, this is not the path to go down. This, this is the path to fucking Belmarsh Prison. This is." <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not, not the way to grift by any means. Please clap. <laughs>